This episode of Channel KRT is sponsored by Red Ribbon Reviewers. Red Ribbon Reviewers is a movement for internet-based reviewers and podcasters to spread awareness and discussion on HIV and AIDS during the holiday season. To show solidarity with Red Ribbon Reviewers, we'll be including a donation link to the Black AIDS Institute in the descriptions for our Christmas episodes, as well as our Twitter feed. Thank you, and happy holidays. Welcome to Channel KRT, the only podcast where we unequivocally hate winter. <laughs> damn straight. <laughs> and you damn wiener kids can cry all you want about it. I'm Randy the Red Nosed, uh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kate Quinn, and this is why you don't fuck a snowman in the ass. <laughs> I'm Tyler Green Christmas, you know, like the Bare Naked Lady song, which is a banger, by the way. Huzzah! And welcome to the Third Timers Club, Jen Seggio! Woo! If I had a nickel for every Channel KRT episode I was in, where the material we covered had a villain breaking into a rap song, I'd have two nickels. Which is a lot of <laughs> that's happened twice. Oh my god, you're well, right. Well, the rap song in this is more of a rap song than whatever the fuck, uh, whatever the murky. F- fuck the Murky was doing <laughs> in that. And I forgot his name. I for- literally forgot his name. I was like, out of Dick Dastardly? <laughs> I almost forgot that Rainbow Bride existed for a second, and I was like, when did Jimbery have a villain besides Jimbo himself? <laughs> <laughs> you know how every band has that one member who was totally just, like, whacked out all the time? And you'll be like, so what was it like recording, insert all-time famous hit here? And they'll be like, I don't remember that, honestly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so my name today was a pun mixture between a Christmas pun and a John Goodman pun, because today we are taking a look at Frosty Returns, 1992. That was John Goodman? Yep, you didn't that, know that was yeah, John Goodman? John Goodman. I, what? <laughs> How the fuck did you not know that was John Goodman? Randy, that's not very Ralph and you're the king of you. <laughs> I watched it and then I was like, okay, that was a thing, and then forgot about it. You know what, Randy? That's it. I, I've put up with a lot of bullshit from you this year, but this this crosses the line. You're fired. <laughs> you know what? Fine. I'll just go work for Escape from Vault Disney. Uh-oh, guys. John Goodman overheard us, and he's going to become John Badman. Did it, no, did it, did it, did it. I will show you the life of the wine. <laughs> but seriously, I'm the snowman and my name is Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the life of the snow. I'll show you the life of the snow. I will show you the life of the snow. We have way too much fun. <laughs> So, yes, we are talking about Frosty Returns today with John Goodman, of course, Randy. <laughs> but, yeah, so what is everyone's relationship with the special, starting with Jen? Um, my cousin had Frosty Returns on tape, and I remember wanting to watch it a lot when we visited because it was a sequel video to a tape I didn't know, and that would be something I'd do. If a friend had a Land in the King of Thieves or Lion King 2, I'd want to watch it because I didn't have it. Aww. Uh, Jen, I'm sorry, but at first I thought I heard Alanis in The King of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just imagining just a universe where the Disney Aladdin was just as successful, but he's voiced by Alanis Morissette. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me Alanis Morissette is Aladdin's father? <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. Huzzah. And I'm and I- here to remind you, you know, of the lamp tired. you stole on. Well, I mean, it does technically tie into how heavily Aladdin was promoted in the Disney World Full House episode, and, you know, Alanis Morissette did write a song about Joey. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. And she's here to remind you of the mess you left when you went away, indeed. How does everything (laughs) come back to Full House on this podcast? (laughs) All right, so to Jen, you were saying... Um, yeah, something that always fascinated me about Frosty Returns is that it's a sequel to what many consider a Rankin-Bass special. And let it be known, there is no Rankin-Bass involvement with this. None. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. shows. This sequel has about as much connection to Rankin-Bass as any of the Land Before Time sequels have anything to do with Don Bluth. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. 
Speaking of sequels, I unfortunately watched before the original. <laughs> <sighs> I am ashamed too. Don't worry. Jeez. Oh, I've actually never seen this in full until doing the podcast. I've seen bits and pieces of it, and it's always sat in the back of my mind as, you know, that one Frosty special that doesn't feel like a Frosty special. I did a little digging into this, and I found out this was produced by CBS because they didn't have the broadcast rights to the original Frosty or the official Frosty sequels by Rankin Bass, like Frosty's Winter Wonderland or Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. So this was CBS saying that they were going to build their own snowman with blackjack and hookers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Beat me to it. (laughs) <laughs> Truly the worst mistake CBS has made since Bryant Gumble. Ironically enough, there was a lot of promise in this because it's directed by Bill Melendez, who you may know from pretty much every single Peanuts special ever directed. And mm-hmm. it's also written by Jim Lewis, who gave us, and I am not kidding, Muppet Classic Theater. Yeah! Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Not to mention, it's got a really good cast to it. Like, John Goodman, it's got Brian Doyle Murray as the villain, Andrea Martin as the teacher, Jan Hooks as the mom, Jonathan Winters as the narrator, and a young... young... Elizabeth Moss, too. Yep. <laughs> and Captain Knuckles as the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, we said that. The Flying Dutchman. And stop staring at me Eat with them big ol' snow eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he uses the same voice for every character. Regardless of who he's playing, he just uses that old salty sea dog voice. <laughs> and you hear it and you're like, yep, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah. It's the Patrick Warburton effect. Exactly. Yeah. And his character, meanwhile, has a cat instead of a groundhog. Opportunity <laughs> missed. <laughs> <laughs> well, this came out like so- a year or two before Groundhog Day, I think. So It's also produced by Lorne Michaels of Saturday Night Live, which is probably how they got the cast together. So Wow, okay. All right, that's it. Officially now I have to ask, what is with all these topics we've been doing lately that are like, you know, mediocre at best, pure heaps of shit at worst, and having these insane names attached to them? The producer of Saturday Night Live did this? And the music's composed by Mark Mothersbaugh, because why should we ever escape? (laughs) It has that very distinct Adventures in Wonderland sound. It sounds like it's right out of an episode of Rugrats. Yes. Uh, I will say, it is very jarring hearing, like, a Rugrats-y soundtrack on what's obviously supposed to be emulating Rankin Bass. Okay, one more fun fact. One of the editors is, and I'm not kidding, Chuck McMahon. (gasps) Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All of this talent for a special that overall I just find meh. (laughs) My history with this? I have no history. I've seen the original Frosty a ton of times by now. I've seen bits and pieces of the modern day Cartoon Network one. This, um, I think I've heard of it in passing, but I have never actually paid any mind to it until now, and I can kind of see why. Oh yeah, that's the one where he's voiced by Patrick Starr. Yep, Bill Fager back. I'll cut off your nutsack and nail it to my door! Like one of those lion door knockers rich folks got! That will be your balls! And Tom Kenny is in that too. So what is it about Frosty specials attracting Spongebob actors to it? (laughs) (laughs) Again, it's very jarring hearing what is obviously a Patrick Star voice. Like, he's doing full-blown Patrick Star voice coming out of a snowman. And don't forget John Goodman played Santa on the stop-motion Spongebob Christmas special, so it all comes together. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm in a much different boat from Tyler and Randy. I actually watched this special a lot when I was a kid because I was obsessed with the Rankin-Bass specials. I would watch them even when it wasn't Christmas. I was that obsessed. I would watch the Frosty one a lot. It was my favorite as a kid. As an adult, I think it's Santa Claus is coming to town, but I still really... Oh, yeah. For me, it's You're Without a Santa Claus. That's a good one. Yes, that one's amazing. For me, it's a toss-up between Santa Claus is Coming to Town and Little Drummer Boy. Oh, Oh, yeah, that one's so Unapologetically, I fucking love Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That is my number one rank and best special. It is probably the only one with, you know, stop-motion characters that aren't terrifying. Yeah, Yeah, that's fair. I love Here Without a Santa Claus. I love Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Don't get me wrong, but... The characters all have this very weird, uncanny, like, Glasgow smile to them. Yeah. And they're always <laughs> smiling no matter what they're feeling. When they're sad, when they're pissed off, they're still smiling, and it freaks me out. Meh. Rudolph yeah. does not have this problem, and I love it for that. 
And huzzah. And I just, oh my god, I just fucking love Rudolph so much. Anyway, so while this isn't a Rankin Bass special, they actually used to promote it on the same tapes as a lot of the Rankin Bass ones because it was actually under the same label as Golden Books. So that's how it managed to get promoted as a semi sequel to Frosty. So I'd watch it a lot as a kid. I memorized it. When I was a teenager, I actually wrote a scathing review of it on a now deleted DeviantArt because I was kind of my edgy, I gotta hate movie movies phase and i want to be a tough edgy reviewer so i was so you were in the phase that i'm currently in (laughs) yeah Yeah, fair (laughs) and as an adult like i said i just find it kind of meh it's not harmful it's not like anything terrible it's just overall middle of the road (laughs) it's just bland it's not good it's not bad it's just milk toast as fuck really I am going to be extremely controversial right now. I like this more than the original Frosty. Yeah, that's Get out. valid. <laughs> All right, that's it. Off to the execution chambers. Yay! I'll say, I'll say this much. I think it's the best follow-up to the original, but that's only because I really did not care for Frosty's Winter Wonderland, because at least the premise of this one isn't, let's watch these snowmen fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding. I thought Frosty Returns was the Patrick Star one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I saw. We should do that one, though. Oh, God. Next year. Yes. That one is trash. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. I mean, we already know we're doing all of the other reindeer next year, so. Yes, that was so bless. Yes. Oh, I love that one. Oh, yes. Fucking love all of the other reindeer. You know, I just realized something that I should have brought up in the Arthur's Perfect Christmas episode. Oh. And I know it's just me, but does anyone else think Mr. Haney kind of sounds like Burl Ives? <laughs> You're right. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I live to be a hundred, I'll never be able to forget that big snowstorm a couple of years ago. I want to go home. Future Rankin Bass special post Rudolph needs to fucking imitate the Burl Lives narrator to try and match that success, a la Eddie Murphy as Mushu trying to replicate the success of Genie and Aladdin being Robin Williams. <laughs> oh, by the way, I do not tolerate Mushu hate. We love Mushu in this house. Yeah, damn straight. I mean, I love John Goodman, obviously, but an improv guy, he's not, and he's kind of playing a genie s character here. And I don't know. I feel like somebody like John Candy probably would have sold it more. Yeah, now that you mention it, John Candy would have been great. Yeah, he would have probably would have. But I appreciate that. I don't know. Unlike the original Frosty, it feels like it's actually trying with the humor. I learned that Frosty's original voice actor, Jackie Vernon, was a pretty filthy comedian for the time. And I listened to some (laughs) of his material out of curiosity, and I was laughing quite a lot. And when you listen to it, it makes you realize just how neutered he was playing Frosty. He's just being cute, and I just... Ugh, I can't stand it. When you're done with this podcast, look up Sex is Not Hazardous to Your Health on YouTube. Listen to it. Oh, fuck yeah. I will. Huzzah. So that's why I really do appreciate John Goodman's attempt to be humorous. And I, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate yeah, it. Yeah, it's not bad. Like I said, he's got his moments in this. It's just, I don't blame him as much as I blame the script, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so this is our second Christmas special where somebody glides in on a snowflake that we reviewed <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I- at least this is way better than Best Christmas Ever. I'll say that much. It is, yes. <laughs> yes. So Jonathan Winters is the narrator, and I'm sorry, that character design is just so fucking unpleasant. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. I guess what they're trying to do a caricature him, just like how they did a caricature of Jimmy Durante from the original special, but he looks like he's not part of the same special. It's like he's from a different one. He just flew in. Yeah. And the opening credits when he has his own title card, like... He has this smile that kind of just reads to me as, kill me. <laughs> so, is he supposed to be like a flea? He, I guess he's supposed to be a who, I guess, since he travels in on a snowflake and he's basically snowflakes. But I don't fucking what know. What made me think he was a flea was because in one scene, it turns out he's just hanging out in like a dog. <laughs> Yeah. Which, like, I could see a flea, like, being able to ride on a snowflake, because fleas are fucking insane in their survival skills. Mm -hmm. 
I will say he does have some really good lines as a narrator. I love that line he had about Frosty thinks it's cool to go without socks in January. <laughs> oh, you know, the classic Rankin Bass narrators. You know, you have a snowman, you have a mailman, you have a parasitic insect. <laughs> <laughs> also, was the narrator supposed to be diegetic? Because he keeps appearing with Frosty and helping out with the story, but I also couldn't tell if he was supposed to be real at points. <laughs> I don't know, quite frankly. Here's the thing that annoys me about him when he appears. They're trying to make the snowflake he's on look like it's hovering, but he scaled a with it so he's squashing and stretching along with yeah, the snowflake it's, it's yeah so- when i was watching that it was making me dizzy it looked like <laughs> shit it really did and speaking of which i'm gonna be honest like i do really like frosty's design in this and holly's design but everybody else looks like a kind of a halfway point between peanuts and an adult swim special and it just doesn't really mesh Charles looks like a gender-flipped Marcy. I know how we can find out if the narrator is real or not. Give me some front line. We'll find out real fast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this art style is just... It's just unpleasant. Like I said, it's in the middle of being good and bad. It's just... Something about it just screams unpleasant to me. Maybe it's because they have adults, because peanut specials are not supposed to have adults. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There were times where I forgot I was watching, like, a Rankin Bass spinoff, and I deadass thought this was, like, a peanut spinoff. Yeah, and thing is, this style works really well for the peanuts, and the awkwardness actually really works for it, but I don't know. Is this what happens when you put, like, uh... The Charlie Brown Christmas special and Frosty the Snowman and the Transporter from the Fly. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's horrifying. Shoot it. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because the original Frosty has a decent animation style, but there's hardly any animation because it's so cheap. It doesn't look that great when it moves. And Frosty Returns, you know, the animation style isn't that great, but there's actual fluidity and movement at times. It's actually yeah. not that bad, but... If there was, like, a middle ground between the two, it would be great. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It feels like it needed a more fluid style of the art. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. And then we get the first song of the movie where the kids are singing about how much they love snow and the adults are singing about how much they hate it. And I'm just going to say it. The adults are right. I actually have a question for all three of you because you're from the East Coast. Damn straight. How do you feel about snow? Hate it. Uh... Well, I mean, pretty much the special does represent, you know, the duality of man and the process of aging, because you can agree with both sides depending on what age you are. When I was a kid, snow was fucking awesome. I loved getting out of school. That shit was great until you were freezing in your boots and, you know, you were ready to go inside, but your mom was still making dinner. She was like, keep playing outside, and you were about to freeze to death, but... (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Other than that, as a kid, I thought that was pretty great until we lived on a 90-degree driveway at one point, and the garage smelled like burnt rubber for, like, a month. Oh, no. But, yeah, as a kid, it was awesome. As an adult, with a car, who has also delivered pizza and blizzards... Oh, no. Uh, I hate it. Mm. And I cannot wait to live in the desert for the rest of my life and never see a single drop of snow ever again. The way that I look at it is that snow is absolutely beautiful when you see it. But when you have to shovel it, that's a different story. Yeah. That'll make anyone hate snow entirely. Oh, There's a very healthy minimum where it'll put a nice little sheet over all the plants and the grass and shit but then just melt off the concrete in the morning. Yeah, I'm kind of with Brandy on this one. It does a good job kind of like capturing, you know, how awesome it is when you're a kid, when you're an adult, it's annoying. But yeah, yeah. again, I'm kind of like in the middle ground. In New York, we have not had a white Christmas since 2003, and I miss that. Oh, I'm and sorry about that. That's not, nah, it's all right. Don't, it, it's not your fault. Blame global warming. <laughs> it's kind of my fault. I drive a car. <laughs> well, I don't drive, but I walk. So not exactly the most fun either. <laughs> yeah, snowy yeah, weather, but still, I don't know. I, I don't hate it. By the way, if anyone wants to buy me a Prius, uh, please and thank you. I used to live in Utah when I was really little, so I did get an experience with snow, but most of my life otherwise has been in California and extremely hot California at that, so it's always Take been- me with you! <laughs> <laughs> please! I hate it here! It's so cold! The air hurts my face! Oh, I want you out here! Oh. No. 
I will say, though, if you want a really good song about how adults hate snow, always listen to Lou Rawls and the Hey Arnold Christmas special. Yes. (laughs) You know what's also an amazing I Hate Christmas song? Oh, yes. Oscar's I Hate Christmas song. Yes, I love him. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was thinking the 12 pains of Christmas. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, too. Even as a kid who loved Christmas, I thought that song was hilarious. As an adult who's dealt with winter, I still think it's hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, anyway, going back to the special. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating that they don't really seem to find a good middle ground. It's like, no, you either love snow or you hate the world having water. It's, It's like, I'm not saying snow isn't necessary, but you gotta find a middle ground. Like, come on. (laughs) <laughs> no, yeah, no kidding. So just, it's here that we get introduced to the main kids of the special, Holly and Charles, and I'm just going to say it, even I wanted to give Charles a wedgie. Yeah, he was kind of giving baby Neil deGrasse Tyson at points, but at the same time, I was also like, Holly's kind of a bad friend to him because she's literally telling him that she's going to saw him in half with no proper training. Yeah, because she's a magician, quote unquote. And she wants to perform a magic trick for the holiday carnival that's going on, but they never follow through with that. That's not even a magic box. Like, that's not even how the magic box works, unless you want to go American Horror Story with it. <laughs> well, to be fair, that's how I thought Song of Person Half worked when I was a kid. So she, like me, didn't know any better. <laughs> I mean, she was one step away from cutting him in half. Yeah. (laughs) Let's be real. Also, what's kind of frustrating to me about Holly is that she's talking constantly about how she doesn't connect with other people and how she doesn't have any friends besides Charles, but they never really show that. Like, I was expecting them to give her more of a Luz Naseda style backstory with it, but I guess not. (laughs) There's only so much you can really do in about 20, 30 minutes. They do have the schoolhouse scene, but that's, I don't know, that's the closest we get. Yeah. And also, she leaves Charles spinning around when she goes to find the hat. Like, God forbid you save your friend before your stupid hat. Yeah, God forbid you be there in case he ends up smashing his head into the wall. I do love what her mom says later. You locked your best friend in a box and just ran off. Now, how are you going to feel when poor Charles grows up and has to join a support group? (laughs) I love that. That was a good line. (laughs) Okay, that did get a laugh out of me. (laughs) <laughs> She's a kid. Kids are idiots. They have, you know, skewed priorities. I'm okay with that. That's true. If there's one thing I know about children is that they're dicks. Also, yes. Charles says, let's go outside and make a fertility goddess. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <Charles>. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, I, get. I like that the special really tries to have kind of like a slightly adult sense of humor at times i, I did get a laugh out of that that was just so awkward <laughs> i know a lot of christmas traditions are basically stolen from nordic pagans you know the trees the lights all that good shit santa is basically odin where does the fertility goddess come in? <laughs> um, Maybe Frigga, because I, I don't know. She, we have the mistletoe. That's because of Frigga, I think. I, are you really sure that snow angels are also a stolen pagan tradition? It's, it's just waving your arms back and forth in the snow. Is that supposed to be a pagan fertility goddess? Sure, why not? <laughs> okay, I guess I know Easter's the one with the fertility goddess. First of all, um, that's well, the maybe one if I you're trying sure. to make like one of the biblical angels that look all crazy and weird, that might count. I don't know. Uh, how is that a fertility <laughs> goddess? Be not afraid of snow. <laughs> this kid is one of those assholes that like uses a bunch of big words to sound smart, but doesn't use them at all correctly. So he just looks like a moron who knows big words. <laughs> I mean, he is a moron who knows big words. So that was Elon Musk's childhood, basically. <laughs> yes, yes it was. <laughs> so, Great. was Andrea Martin always meant to be typecasted as uptight, pointy-nosed teachers? Because she's literally playing Mrs. Fowl in this. Same fucking character. She yeah, looks thought- like a skinny version of Miss Finster from Recess. Something, something, Mrs. Battleax. She also looks like a concept art of Miss Fowl, and I'm just like... <laughs> and I was half expecting it to be revealed they were like twin sisters or something. Holly, this is the seventh time in a row you've brought the snowman to show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> I did like her in this special. She had some fun lines. and <laughs> Yeah, Andrea Martin's great. Oh yeah, I always like when she shows up. 
Hell yeah. yeah. For all her incessant snow apologism, uh, she really was, you know, the most tolerable character in this entire thing. Also, this is kind of a tangent, but this special might have introduced me to SCTV, but I'm wondering if in that case, why didn't they get Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas to play Strange Brew-style characters? Yes! <laughs> Honestly, I would have loved to see Rick Moranis as young Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man one of these days we're gonna have to go down the rabbit hole of just weird sctv shit that was aimed at kids oh god yes because i remember specifically my introduction to sctv was this fire safety video with joe flaherty as count floyd oh my god and yeah that was the first sctv thing i saw and then when friend of the show kai david was telling me about sctv I kind of put two and two together and Googled Count Floyd and I was like, ah, holy shit. <laughs> you got to do an episode of Camp Candy one of these days. Ooh, oh, yes. God, yes. <sighs> also, speaking of Andrea Martin, there was that time on uh, Sesame Street where she would show up as either Mrs. Falbo or Edith Prickly. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was interesting. So anyway, Holly's hat flies over to Frosty and brings him to life because it's magic now, I guess. <laughs> Except they don't show it. She, she literally runs off to find the hat. Frosty's already wearing the hat and he's alive, so there's no build-up to it whatsoever. And and you could take the hat off at any time and still move and talk, so completely different rules from the first one. They shit all over the continuity of the first film by saying that, you know, Frosty doesn't need his hat to live. Despite the fact that if he took his hat off in the first one, he fucking dies. <laughs> so we're going on pixie dust rules now. Great. Yes, yes we well, are. he doesn't really die if he takes the hat off. It's more like he goes into a coma and then he wakes up again when you put it back on. He only dies if he melts. For fuck's <laughs> sakes, even Family Guy got this right. <laughs> All right, you know what? Fine. I guess we're going on Peter Pan laws now. Let's go to Racism Island now. <laughs> Also, I was a little bit confused when Frosty starts saying that he knows Holly. Like, wouldn't that have made more sense if, like, she had been the one building him and, like, she was kind of venting to him or something during it? Like, I don't know. I yeah. feel like there should have been it a prior It could have been a deleted connection. scene for all we know. Probably, Oh, yeah. so Frosty is stalking a child. <laughs> is it any love. worse than him taking a child to the North Pole and having them almost freeze to death? True, true. You guys true. have fun. I'm gonna go call the police. <laughs> That. <laughs> Maybe Frosty isn't a good icon for kids after all. <laughs> if anything, Frosty should have been the face of Stranger Danger, not Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kids, you want to go to the North Pole and see Santa with me? Just get in my van. <laughs> Climb on the train, children. Also, when Frosty is telling Holly that all she needs is one friend, I was half expecting her to say, You're right, Frosty! My one friend is gonna be L. Ron Hubbard! <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that joke in, because this is the second <laughs> thing we reviewed with an actress who went into Scientology. Oh, man. <laughs> I thought this was the third thing we reviewed where someone went into Scientology, because he oh. did the fucking Disney World thing with John Travolta. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's right! Yeah. <laughs> He was the first, but for me, there will always be something inherently funny about the woman playing an alien in a fucking Cartoon Network movie turning him out to be a Scientologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, now this is something I'd have three nickels for, and um, I don't know what reality is at this point. One thing I will say about this special, I do really love the animation on Frosty. They give him some really funny expressions, especially when he sees the trucks coming in. Essentially, oh, God, I yeah. viewed this as, what if Frosty went to the Charlie Brown universe? And as always, the expressions in, you know, those cartoons are spot on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> His whole style changed, like in Channel Chasers, just, yeah. Frosty's Absolutely. character design is a design that I actually really like. It's a really good design for him. It does look good, yeah. It's sillier, but it fits, especially since John Goodman is voicing him. Yeah, and it definitely fits for the style of characters John Goodman usually plays, too, so... Also, when the trucks are coming in and spraying the shit that gets rid of all the snow, and uh, Frosty says, I'm too squirts for being history! Good night, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised no one even questioned that stuff when it came out. It just instantly, you know, turns the snow into, like summer even for the 90s when consumerism and chemicals was at a pretty big high 
you know, maybe not an all-time high, but a pretty big high. Wouldn't someone question that? Yeah, so Holly's mom was the one who created this stuff, right? The summer wheeze? It was the Captain Knuckles guy. Oh, yeah, him. Because he's like the evil, he's the evil corporate capitalist, which, you know, I mean, yeah, they were right about it, but, um... They never show this much evil. Yeah. I mean, the only extent of his evil is that he treats his cat like shit. Yeah. Well, he does send one of his employees to, into his own fly of despair, so... <laughs> but, sir, what about the environment? This product may cause... Bones, hit the button. <laughs> The problem is, the reason that billionaires and CEOs have been allowed to get away with what they've gotten away with so far is because they've been nice to cats. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe if one of them was a dick to cats, we'd finally get some regulation in this damn country. We should mention, too, that Jen made a YTP of this. Yes, it was amazing. I was going to share that in the Discord after, but yes. Yes. You guys like that. All your YouTube poops are hilarious, by the way. I love them. Thank you. Me, I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy. Stick to what I know. It all started with the snow. I'm the fucking narrator. Didn't Holly's mom hear the yelling snowman behind her? <laughs> like, did oh no yeah, when that him? happens, her mom is showing this woman the summer wheeze, and after she sprays Frosty, you just get this close up of the woman, and she's like, "Incredible!" with the most janky ass animation. <laughs> <laughs> also, I got to get this out. Summer wheeze makes me feel fine. <laughs> They named a product with, like, these ungodly chemicals in it, something wheeze, and people still didn't get, like, just at least a little bit suspicious. You know what? This is America. I shouldn't be surprised at this point. (laughs) Yeah. You know, name- The special is about one rich asshole who's wrecking the climate for his own short stay greed and allowing kids and adults to get caught up in misinformation that allows him to continue his dangerous practices. So, uh, yeah, not much has changed. People ate horse dewormer to try and get rid of a pandemic. I'm not surprised by anything at this point. (laughs) Also, I can't be the only one who thinks that the evil rich guy looks like a wrinkled scrotum, does he? Oh god, he does. (laughs) Okay, is he a flea? Or is he testicles? Also, (laughs) yes. Yes, he is. Also, on the spray can, you see that his expression changes, so it's like, oh joy, they're even sentient now. (laughs) I feel like they would also have a bunch of the EPA on their asses if they were spraying that even a little bit without any protection. Like, come on. (laughs) Even in the 90s. I mean, probably I should say especially in the 90s when all that Save the Earth stuff was, like, really getting everywhere. Huzzah. And the internet wasn't powerful enough to spread misinformation yet, so... So Holly has Frosty hide in the freezer, and they're just tossing food all around. I'm like, how doesn't her mom notice all the frozen food being left out? (laughs) Yeah, not only that, she takes a whole frozen turkey with her to school. Why? (laughs) Ew, it's a dead bird! (laughs) Yeah, there we go. So this environmentalist special is condoning blatant food waste now? Basically. Also, that turkey had to runk ass in her desk. Like, oh, America, God. fuck yeah. <laughs> Coming again to be a bunch of hypocrites, yeah. Though I did get a laugh out of Miss Carbuncle saying, Okay, Holly, bring on the bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Holly, bring on the bird. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love that the kids are eventually saying, Fuck it, we don't want snow anymore. I'm glad that even the kids are getting this. Keep in mind, the special's only like 20 minutes, I think. Like like 20, yeah. 25 minutes. So they really had to condense this shit. And it was very jarring. One minute of the special, all these kids are singing the praises of how snow is the best fucking thing since sliced bread. Very next scene, they're all saying, yeah, snow sucks. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> loser, you like snow. Are kids really that stupid? (laughs) They do pick up from their parents, because one of them says, My dad says snow causes heart attacks. So, you know, they're... Well, like we said before, kids are dicks. No, the problem is, like, the correct science that Charles tries to give them is framed as boring, and the horrible misinformation is played up to sound like fun for anyone who doesn't know better. So it's politics all over again. 
How oh many God, of these kids right. do you think like grew up to vote for Trump? Oh God! So they predicted twenty twenty two. All these kids grew up to insurrect the Capitol because they're little NPCs who could just change their mind at any time. Also, I got a huge laugh out of Charles telling that kid, I think he's mistaking that for chili dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sonic, gotta go fast. Oh yeah, chili dog. I looked into it because that kid kind of sounded familiar and I did watch a peanut special a little bit before watching this one again just to keep up with it. And I wondered for a sec if any of these kids might have been in other peanut specials. Probably. And it turns out, I think that one specific boy who speaks up, in the credits, they list Philip Glasser as one of the voices. Yes, Fievel is in this cartoon. And I think Holy that shit. boy was him. Oh, yeah. Did we ever mention that the kid who played Nick on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Thomas Decker, was Fievel in one of those movies? Oh, my God, oh. that's right. <laughs> and speaking of things we never mentioned, uh, Barbara Allen Woods, the mom from that show, was on the fucking Chucky series. That actually brings me to another fact. The kid who voices Charles in this was in both Child's Play and Child's Play 3. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so it all comes full circle. For the love of God, kid, you were Fievel. Get a better agent. <laughs> okay, okay, I know... Just mentioning her name is already a dark fucking topic, but this is Judith Barcy and Jaws 4 all over again. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Paycheck is a paycheck. What are you going to do? Yeah. Charles is Dr. Fauci, and all these kids are all the anti-maskers throughout 2020. Yes. <laughs> ah. Well, this is how you pump out the Republicans. Also, Miss Carbuncle's being backed by oil companies. That's why she falls asleep during the lecture. she's the Kristen cinema of the school world (laughs) she's being backed by oil companies oh so she's the only teacher in the world being paid a living wage oh (laughs) Oh, Oh. (laughs) and so then holly runs out of the classroom somehow not getting in trouble for cutting school and she finds frosty at the winter wonderland And somehow, none of these people are even remotely noticing the talking snowman still, but... Yeah, this whole time, like, nobody's ecstatic about this magical fucking snowman. Even when Mr. Twitchell notices him, he's like, Hey, what's that snowman doing there? And, like, it's not for the reasons that you'd think. It's not, like, he's freaking out over there being a talking snowman. He's freaking out over there being more snow. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> like and- what is this special it's it's just it's continuity is fucked also frosty that castle is probably made out of fake ice you're not gonna last very long in it <laughs> yeah that's uh that's plastic frosty! <laughs> that is probably made of about as much real ice as like a child's elsa castle playset. <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing, too. When they get to the ice castle and and Charles is like, this place is starting to look drier than Mrs. Carbuncle's knees. (laughs) I don't think they were talking about knees in the original draft. No. (laughs) Yeah, kind of a wonder they snuck that in. I can tell you, grades 4 through 12, you're already making some fucked up jokes. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) I do really like the Let There Be Snow song when it's sung by Frosty and Holly. They have a really nice singing chemistry together. It's It's really cute. I mean, it's a cute song, but uh, no one seems terrified of the eldritch horror that is a talking snowman. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, they're terrified of hearing the Flying Dutchman rapping. (laughs) Oh, God, yes. This is what he brings into rap in the middle of their song. He's about to drop the hottest mixtape of the winter. Tupac, Biggie, they've been silent ever since he spoke up. (laughs) No, he's about to drop the hottest mixtape of the Jonathan Winter. Ah! (laughs) Also, is no one, like, even the least bit pissed off that this guy is trying to eliminate snow from the winter carnival? I guess not. And he's saying, hey, you know everything you built the celebration around? Fuck it! Fuck it up the ass. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he wants to destroy winter so he can be king of the winter carnival. Elon Musk tried the same thing when he wanted to be king of Twitter. Wonder how that's working out for him. Hey, yo. <laughs> uh, this is like the third Elon Musk joke we've made so far. I love that. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, he can't ban us from recording our own podcast. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. That's true. He doesn't own Spotify. Don't get any ideas. Up, up, up. <laughs> <laughs> we already have enough white supremacists over there. <laughs> oh, God. How do they save the Winter Carnival again? Because up th- they're, they're, they're saying like, oh, we can use magic. And then it just snows the next day yeah it's so weird and also i saw they were selling snow cones at the winter carnival and i'm just like like just don't eat the lemon ones i've learned that from monsters inc (laughs) (laughs) oh man also they have all these carnival rides like how the hell are those gonna work in the snow because all the seats and the gears and stuff are gonna be wet yeah i mean mm -hmm. i have been to edaville for christmas and they kind of have, you know, what I'd classify as carnival rides, and they seem to work. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know. I'd have, If I'm being honest, I have no idea, but they do. Also, when Charles shows up to meet Holly at the Winter Carnival, he doesn't scream at seeing Frosty can move. He just looks around and he's like, batteries. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah, because that's how technology works. Just put batteries into this fucking snowman. <laughs> Maybe he's just just aware that he's in a Christmas special and he just accepts what's happening. That's what all these people are. They just they just know. Batteries for this adult sized thing? How many you're gonna need a lot of batteries for that, dude. I don't think Boston Dynamics uses, like, two double A's. Also, Twitchell sends out Evil Garfield to spray him, and how doesn't he see him inside the castle? Uh, look, a talking snowman! Where? Oh god, it's real! Ah! (laughs) (laughs) As long as it's not played by Michael Keaton, I'm good. (laughs) Huzzah. Anyway, so I will say also that while it's not as traumatizing as seeing Frosty literally melt into a puddle in the original, it was pretty disturbing to see Frosty slowly melting away. <laughs> yeah, it What's was up? kind of Cronenberg-esque. Yeah. What is he up? gets this big hole in his stomach and he kind of seems starting to drip for a while after. So, yeah. Although if they he shot him. They fucking shot Frosty in this. And the kids are looking at basically what are his organs, so. (laughs) Wait, does he have organs, though? No, but it's like a big hole in the middle, but it's still. I just need to know, what is up with every single cartoon about snowmen ever fucking made and showing us them melting while sentient? Haven't we had enough of that? Can't we just have the snowman just, you know, live the rest of his life fine or something? Oh, wait, Frozen gave us that. Well, no, we still had to watch Olaf briefly melt for a bit. Sometimes it's worth finding somebody you'd melt for. <laughs> but maybe not right this second. Huzzah. Also, and- I know I'm going to hell for saying this, but when Holly gets on stage to chew out Mr. Twitchell and says... Unless you've got a spray that makes little girls disappear, then I'm not leaving. I was half expecting him to spray her in the face with the summer wheeze. <laughs> oh, I guess God. that would have been you know a PR what? disaster, though. So I guess that's you know the only what? reason why he did it. Roll credits. Oh. <laughs> I feel like there's no joke I could make about this that wouldn't get cut out. No joke. <laughs> All right, fuck it. Cut this out if you want. Something, something Jeffrey Epstein. Yay! (laughs) So Charles ends up saving Frosty because he had snow in his freezer. Sure, why not? It was sweet, though. (laughs) Yeah, it was cute. Not too golden. And then also, when it cuts to Twitchell in his bedroom with the cat, why was he the same size as the cat? Just as a very big cat, I guess. Sure. Uh, <laughs> nothing in this special makes any goddamn sense. I love how they have officially ruined the reputation and finances of this evil capitalist overlord, as we all want. But then it's like, you know, hey, I know you're sad, but you- imagine if finally Twitter shut down, nobody ever bought a Tesla again, and SpaceX went out of business. And you just see Elon Musk all sad, like, you know, sitting in the snow. And the first thing you say when you go up to him is, hey, champ, you want to ride in my sled? Hey, it's okay, Donald Trump. It's okay that you nearly overthrew the entire government and caused everybody to die. Here, you can be president for the day. Hey, Trump, Mm -hmm. I know that every single candidate you've endorsed for Senate and Congress has lost. And now your business has been indicted for fraud. And now you yourself are in the process of officially being indicted for trying to overthrow the government. 
<laughs> but you can be president of this sled for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they were inviting him on the sled, my first assumption was that they were going to go on top of a hill, and then at the last minute they were going to jump off <laughs> and let fucking Twitchell just rot. <laughs> I thought they were just going to let him freeze to death inside that small. Also, I mean, at least they did let the cat drown. That was good to them. That was good. I was kind of hoping the cat would, like, turn against him. Yeah. And kick him off the sled. And then you'd see, like, a bunch of wolves around him and the cat's just, like, doing a muttly laugh. Yes, the cat could be like LeFou. I think my favorite part is Twitchell gets in the car and he tries to, like, run over Frosty and Holly, but he loses control and he crashes in the pond. He drives off the castle wall, crashes in the water. And the next thing you see is just the people walking onto the screen saying, let there be snow, just super happy, completely <laughs> ignoring the guy crashing and drowning right behind him. Just, just like some fucking like winter themed version of let it die, let it die. Let it die. <laughs> I was just let gonna die. say the whole crowd's mind changes after singing a song. So this Beanville or whatever it's called, it's really Sneedville from the Lorax movie. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Also, if he let that cat drive, there's no way they wouldn't have run over at least ten of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Also, that crowd changed its mind so damn quickly. Even the adults. And I'm just like, oh, come on. There's not like some people trying to provide a middle ground or something. Exactly. <laughs> That's why this is Sneedville from the Lorax. Huzzah. There's no snow centrism out there. Don't you mean snentrism? Ah. Yay. <laughs> I but don't you understand? Both seasons are bad. <laughs> I did get a little emotional seeing Frosty and Holly's goodbye, but also at the same time, it's like, oh yeah, Holly, you still only have one friend, and that's enough. It's like, wouldn't they have at least shown her starting to get along with the rest of the kids or something? I don't know. Um, I actually really hey. did like Frosty and Holly's friendship. I thought it was sweet. He always it knew was. what to say, yeah, do to lift her up, and I too was sad when you know he had to go. And as someone who tended to only have one or two close friends growing up instead of having a lot... That line, just, you know, just having one friend makes a difference. It really struck a chord with me. Yeah, that's true. It's similar to just one person from the Muppets. So that's a, mm-hmm. that's a sweet moment. I actually. bet you yeah. kids at school are all fucking like, Hi, Holly. We noticed you're friends with an eldritch horrifying being. We're going to now start being friends with you in the fears that you'll send demons to kill us if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, those kids are probably all going to grow up to be Republicans anyway, so... <laughs> And also because I like to get on my soapbox about music theory, at the end, when Frosty tells the trumpet player to play B-flat, he doesn't play B-flat, he plays G. Yeah, I remember- Fuck out of here, movie. <laughs> I I gotta be honest. Where's the video complaining about the authentic trumpet playing not being represented in the special? <laughs> I gotta be honest, none of the kids in this could sing. Eh. No. At least they were aware that Charles couldn't sing. Anytime he tried to sing, all the characters around him started cringing and just making faces. Yeah. So, at least they were aware of I it. mean, the adults are not getting off scot-free here. A good chunk of the adults cannot sing either. Like, in most of the songs in this, I could not understand what anyone was saying because no one could sing good in this. Yeah. Not the children, not the adults. Well, that's why they had Brian Doyle Murray rap, because he probably couldn't sing either. <laughs> it's like, you know what, kids, adults, you both suck. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, going back a bit to that scene, when he was standing on top of the limo, I was half expecting somebody to say, okay, get Lee Harvey Oswald on in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Frosty's been shot again. I will show you the life of the snow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, sh- I'll show you the life of the straw hat. I'll show you the life of the straw hat. I will show you the life of the straw hat. I'll show you the death of the liver. I'll show you the death of the liver. I will show you the death of the liver. You're the one going down the waterfall with sharp rocks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing I wanted to bring up, this whole special really is an example of how climate change disproportionately affects minorities and how we all have to speak out in solidarity against late stage capitalism in order to enact positive change. Because yeah, that's... especially in the end, it's all about, you know, if, you know, the summer wheeze goes out and like, destroys winter, then Frosty and any other snowman like him are going to die. So, yeah, there's that huh? going for it. 
Honestly, yeah. If this special had been a bit longer, I would have liked them to kind of delve more into how even ordinary people can buy too much into the idea that, oh, this won't hurt the environment. I don't know, something like that. Yeah. It's like, you know, everyone changes their mind when Frosty shows up. So yeah, a talking snowman talking about how, you know, we need winter and how the summer wee stuff is destroying it. Then just having that person right there you know, speaking about it kind of makes all the difference. Sometimes you need that person up there to say that uncomfortable truth, whether, you know, you want to hear it or not. Exactly. And one last thing I also got to say is that it's kind of funny that we're reviewing this for our Christmas season because outside of Frosty himself, this special isn't about Christmas, really. (laughs) Yeah, it's a very generic winter special. You just, you can put it any time between December and February and yeah. It's always felt more like a January movie to me. Mm -hmm. Hell, one time when I was a teenager, it snowed in October. You could make this a Halloween special if you really wanted to. (laughs) It has as much to do with Halloween as Back to the Future did. (laughs) Hell, it snows in Antarctica in July. This could be a 4th of July special. Yay! (laughs) In Iceland. (laughs) All right, so going into our final rankings, I'm going to say put in the donation box. Yeah, same here. It's it's overall just bland altogether. It's just not Frosty's best. I'll say this much. I think it's perfectly harmless. If a kid's really into it, then sure, why not? Yeah, it's not like a bad movie by any means, but it just didn't do anything for me at all. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a mixed bag all around, but overall, it's inoffensive. Um, I'm gonna be the outlier here. I'm gonna say it's a keep the tapes for me. That's valid. Yeah, that's fair. Whereas the only real enjoyment I get from the original Frosty is just the evil magician hamming it up. This one, I kind of had fun revisiting it because I like the voice cast. I like that they really tried to tell a story with a positive message. Maybe not well, but they tried. Yeah. There's some moments of clever writing and the animation is actually animated compared to the original special. So <laughs> yeah, I, I actually did enjoy this one. I'll also say that it's also way better than a lot of the later Peanuts specials, especially that really awful Mayflower one they did. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I'm putting in the donation bin because, you know, I, th- this didn't really vibe with me, but there- there's something in it for other people. Yeah. Maybe it's just not for me. There's something to it. But Randy, you gotta let there be snow. Let there be snow. This time of- You know what? That's it. I'm burning it just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, spite. Y- you know what? I was gonna be nice. I was gonna put in the donation bin, but thank you. Now I'm burning it. You know what? No, I'm not burning it. I'm doing to it what they did to that printer in office space. <laughs> Just because you said that. No, just kidding. Put it back in the donation box. I'll repair it as best I can. I- Huzzah. Anyway, so thank you so much for joining us again, Jen. Oh, thanks for having me on. I love talking with you guys about this kind of stuff. Yeah, oh, same here. Yeah, this was fun. This was great. I loved roasting it. <laughs> and also, we're giving you a discount for your third time. Yay. 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 I don't know what the discount is for. Unfortunately, we do not follow the Goldmark model where you get a guest choice after a few times on our show. Uh, but you do get a uh, $10 Dunkin' Donuts gift card. Yay. Oh, yeah. That's the only thing Woo. on the East Coast. <laughs> Look, sometimes it's a ten dollar Chipotle card, and what can you get for ten dollars at Chipotle? Uh, exactly. Everything on the East Coast is either Dunkin' Donuts, Wawa, or nothing else. Huzzah! Mm-hmm. All right. So, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I have a blog up on the shelf. WordPress.com. I'm going to be looking at a couple of Christmas specials right now, including in time for its thirtieth anniversary, Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, yes. yes! Woo! I know. Hopefully, it'll be ready by the time this podcast goes out. And in case you're curious, I did review several Rink and Bass specials back in 2019. My thoughts aren't exactly the most positive, but after reviewing them all, I kind of realized, putting nostalgia aside, why they're so beloved after all these years. Most of them were made out of love for the holiday, and they yeah. wanted to make something to entertain the kids rather than just be soulish cash grabs. Does that mean they hold up? No, but even though I'm not a huge Rink and Bass fan, I understand why people still like them, and I hope you continue to like them. Hassan, yeah, check out her amazing work. Uh, yes. You- I do have a YouTube channel um, where I just post random stuff called the NFIT. 
And uh, until Twitter burns to the ground, you can find me there at Jen Seggio and on Instagram under the same handle. So, yeah. Huzzah. Huzzah. You can find me at the usual Mission Breakout on Discord, Mission Breakout on Twitter while Twitter is alive. You can find me on a walking pun on Instagram, and we'll see if I have any more social media links in the future. But in the meantime, I'll just be listening to John Goodman saying cash in the special. Because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to bring that up. Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at a Cosmic Rewind, replace the E with a 3 on Elon Musk's Wild Ride. You can also find me by the same name on YouTube. And you can find me doing what all the adults in this special should have done that would have saved them a lot of time and effort. Retire and move to Florida. It's that easy. Damn straight. You don't have to destroy the environment to do that. <laughs> Elon's Wild Ride, don't you mean Grimes? Yes! <laughs> you know... I wish Grimes was the one who bought Twitter. Then maybe it'd be a little more chaotically interesting. Huzzah. Oh, right. Plus, Oblivion slaps. I have to admit it. Yeah, that's fair. All right. You can find me on the usual spots. Tyler FG on Twitter. Tyler FG 96 on Instagram. As for the show, you can find us on Twitter at channel underscore KRT. Channel KRT podcast, all one word on Instagram. You can also find our Discord server and our Facebook group in our link tree in our Twitter bio. And if you want to help support us, we have two options. First, we have our Patreon, where we have exclusive mini-sodes, outtakes, and episodes of this very podcast at its earliest convenience. Or if you just want to buy individual mini-sodes or just donate to us, whatever you'd like, you can also check us out on Ko-Fi. So, yeah. Channel KRT, cut to... Wait, we're starting this episode over and over and over. No! No! Wait a minute, it's a sneak preview of our next topic. (laughs) Cliffhanger. Whoop! Fucking Nazis.